Welcome, welcome friends, welcome again. This is Florence and today we are going to talk about the greatest expose ever. This is the greatest expose ever because when we dig deeper into the revelations that God is going to show us, the enemy of our lives, who is the devil, who is the deceiver of all nations, he is going to be left in the most awkward position against you and he will remain as the destroyed being that he is because 2000 years ago the devil was destroyed his head was crushed and he really has no power against you the only power he has against you is what you allow him to have. So if the devil wins ever with you in any engagement, it is because you have not known your spiritual rights, your privileges, and everything that God has planted within your spirit. So the enemy, when he comes to you, he always comes with his fingers crossed. He comes with his fingers crossed, hoping that you do not understand what you have hoping that you do not use your sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, against Him. And He doesn't mind if you and I polish your sword, which is the Word of God, polish it and sharpen it as much as you want. But as long as you don't use it, he just doesn't want you to use your weapons against him. So going to church on Sunday, going to Wednesday fellowship, going to any meetings, he is not threatened by that. He is only threatened by the soldier who picks up his weapons and starts shooting or starts using the weapons against him. Hallelujah. We shall expose the schemes and the tactics that the devil tries to use against us because we understand that we are the most powerful force on the earth. When we say we want to expose the schemes and tactics of the devil, we are saying that schemes and tactics is the only thing that he can use against you and I. He can only come to you and I with lies. He wants to lie to you that God does not mean what he says. He wants you to be just as spiritual as you can, but never ever use the sword of God against him. So this devil, he used to be a covering cherub. Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created 
till iniquity was found in thee. And then that's when angel Michael kicked the enemy out of heaven to the second heaven where he dwells with a third of the angels who he deceived. And they are now dwelling in the second heaven. And from there, they cannot be able to get to God because God is the one who kicked them out of heaven. And because God kicked them out of heaven, the enemy cannot be able to get to God. The only thing that he can do is try as much as possible to get close to God by trying to steal and to kill the planting of God within our spirit man. Within our spirit man. The enemy wants with all of his might that you and I remain in the realm of the flesh because he knows as long as we remain in the realm of the flesh, we will be powerless against him. The enemy doesn't want us to understand who we are and that is a tactic that he uses. Today, the Lord desires that we understand that we are primarily a spirit man. God created us as a spirit. The body was simply made from the dust of the earth and the body is an earth suit because a spirit cannot survive on the earth without a body. You have to have a body. To be on the earth it's just like going to the moon when people from NASA have to go to the moon or to outer space they have to wear a special space suit and with this suit they can be able to live in the realm of the outer space and in the moon so what many of us do or have done is that we spend a lot of time grooming, decorating, feeding, and pampering our earth suit. And inside the earth suit just like just like the way the space suit has a real person the real person is inside the space suit inside the earth suit is our spirit man and our spirit man can be a very weak stick man if we do not feed him the word of God says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by the word that comes forth from the mouth of God. So we understand that God is a spirit. And if he is going to send a word unto us, we have to download that word in our spirit man we have to download that word within the realm of our spirit man so our spirit man has to be able to have ears to hear and eyes to see when god created everything he created it to perfection Everything that is on the earth has been created to perfection. When we look at animals, like for instance, if we look at the animals of prey, predators, like lions, a lion has been created with a vision that is called a stereoscopic vision, with one eye slightly above the other, to be able to judge depth, 
more accurately and the distance between itself and the animal that it is pursuing. Now, the animal that is being pursued has, for instance, like a gazelle. It has eyes on its sides and it, these eyes can actually see 360 degrees. It can see both forward and backwards. It can see behind itself and it can notice when a predator is trying to encroach against it from behind it. Now, we as human beings, we have been created with our eyes that are forward set. Forward set eyes because we have always been meant to be the hunters and not the hunted. Therefore, it doesn't stop right there. This is where we get more from God. Because we do have a spirit man within us. The spirit man has been given spirit eyes and spirit ears. We have to have spiritual eyesight and spiritual hearing. And these have to be sharp so that we can be able to hear what the Lord, who is a spirit, is saying unto us. Hallelujah. So, we understand that the devil's scheme is actually to keep us unaware that we actually are primarily spiritual beings. Spiritual beings. And if we are to walk in the natural and win every battle and overcome every circumstance, we have to use the word that comes from God in the realm of the spirit. If you and I are in any circumstance, big or small, the Lord wants for us to be able to know that by downloading the word of the Lord from the realm of the spirit, we are able to walk in victory as opposed to setting our physical eyes on the physical and the natural circumstances and drawing quick conclusions based on what we are seeing in the natural. So that could very well be the area of your weakness, my brother and sister. So the Lord God is saying to us that we have to get spiritual. We must allow the spirit man to arise and be a great spirit man and not allow the realm of the flesh to overwhelm and over arc the realm of our spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we look at the life of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, what was fundamental and foundational about how he lived his life? What was fundamental? we find something that we must latch on that is extremely critical. The Word of God tells us in John 5, 19, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself except what he sees his Father do. The Lord was the second Adam, and he came to live an exemplary life. 
so that we can do what he did so that we can be able to live the victorious life that he showed to us all 2000 years ago that we can live if we adhere to the way that he showed us the word of god tells us that he is the way the truth and the life again the lord is the way the lord is the truth and the lord is the life if we latch on to the way that he taught us guaranteed victory is ours the enemy will not have a chance with you and i but he will remain on his side of the line hallelujah so the lord knew first that he was on a mission he knew that he had been sent by his father he knew that his father who is our father had given unto him all power and he knew that he would go back to his father likewise you and i must know that we have been sent on a mission we must know that all power has been given unto us the word of god says i have given unto you all power to trample over serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy all power of the enemy and nothing nothing absolutely nothing by any means shall harm you hallelujah so before the lord executed his mission he was first and foremost filled by the holy spirit he was baptized at river jordan and then filled with the power of the holy spirit and this is the power of the holy spirit with which he was able to go out and do the works that he did hallelujah so romans 8:14 talks to us about being led of the holy spirit those who are led of the holy spirit are the sons of god so you and i cannot claim sonship we are only immature children of the kingdom if we are not being led every day every instance by the spirit of god so we have to graduate from being children to being people who are matured to the standard height of christ and are led by the spirit of god So consulting the counsel of the Holy Spirit is crucial to keep us in the know as far as what God is saying. There are situations and circumstances in the word of God and these situations and circumstances show us how various people reacted to circumstances that were unfolding all around them and what can we learn from them when we look at the story of Lazarus Lazarus was dead the household of Lazarus was wailing and they were all wondering and questioning the lord and telling him that if you were here our brother could not have been 
in this condition right now, he is dead. He is literally dead. If you got here on time, he could have lived. But we see in this particular story that there was a word that God had already unveiled. And the word that he had unveiled for this household was that this sickness is not unto death. Now, this is the truth that was churning, literally churning like fire in the realms of the spirit. But nobody had been able to latch on to these truths. The reason why we are not able to latch on to the truths of what is going on in the realm of the spirit is because we fail to be spiritual enough and we continue on with a spiritual lethargy and we continue on being lackadaisical in the spirit and this laziness is what causes us not to apprehend the provision that God makes for us in the realm of the spirit hallelujah so we see that the decrees that God makes in the realm of the spirit are what overarch the natural circumstances. The decree of the king is final. No matter what is going on in the realm of the spirit, what God says is final. Hallelujah. So we have to go, we have to push and go deeper into the realm of the spirit man and be able to hear what thus says the Lord. Hallelujah. Jehoshaphat and the children of Judea in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 was surrounded by Ammonites, was surrounded by many enemies that had come against them. The first thing that happened was that fear gripped Jehoshaphat. King Jehoshaphat felt the fear. And so would anybody, really. Anybody would feel fear if you have been surrounded by enemies that are there to capture and or to kill you. So, King Jehoshaphat decided to call on a fast. It was a three-day fast. So this is the first step that he took. After feeling the fear, he quickly, quickly got on his knees and called on the name of the Lord. And as they were in the realm of the Spirit, the word from God came through to one of the prophets and he says thus says the Lord this battle is not yours but this battle is the Lord's now you can imagine if King Jehoshaphat and the Israelites did not bother to go to grab a hold of this provision that God had made for them in the realm of the spirit. They could have been annihilated by their enemies. So the Lord is telling us that we have to be people who actually go deep in the realm of the spirit regarding the confusing matters of our lives regarding the circumstances all around our lives regarding all situations and all issues the answer lies in the realm of the spirit and the devil does not want you to know this hallelujah so when we go into the realm of the spirit and apprehend the victory that God has for us. Fear begins to dissipate. 
automatically. And what takes over is faith. Therefore, we start walking in faith and victory. But if we remain in the natural realm, the natural circumstances will keep dictating to us. And we will continue to make conclusions based on what we are seeing immediately. And fear and turmoil will grip us and we will be unable to appropriate the promises that God has given us. We will be unable to understand who we are. We will literally be dominated and controlled by fear and it will paralyze our spirit man and we will be unable to fight through and grab a hold of what God has for us. So this is what the devil does not want you to understand. He wants you to keep your eyes set on the current circumstances. He does not want you to go any deeper than that. But today, we have him exposed. Hallelujah. When we look at the story of Hannah, we can ask ourselves, what happened to Hannah? What happened to Hannah? Because there is a verse in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 18. It says, May your servant find favor in your eyes. Then she went her way and ate something, and her face was no longer downcast. What happened to Hannah? Because one, one minute she was distraught, she was downtrodden, she was just persecuted by her co wife Penina, and then we see her turn the tide. What happened that she turned this tide? Hannah spent time with the Lord and did not give up. She did not give up. The word of God tells us, hallelujah, that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Effectual means it has to be a passionate prayer, a passionate prayer from the depth of our spirit man. Prayers that we pray consistently, consistently. Fervent prayers, prayers that are fiery, fiery, very passionate prayers, very fiery prayers from the depths of our soul where we engage the Spirit of God, where we pray in other tongues. We pray in the realm of the Spirit until we feel we have attained a spiritual breakthrough and our eyes in the Spirit have opened and we have apprehended the victory that we are standing in the gap about. Hallelujah. So, Hannah got to this place that we are talking about. Hallelujah. She was able to sense in the realm of the spirit, her spiritual eyes were open and she was able to see that God had given unto her a son. Hallelujah. She was able to download this in the realm of the spirit and she could see by faith, because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hallelujah. So she was able to see in the realm of the spirit and apprehend that which she was praying fervently about. So this is what needs to happen to you and I. Hallelujah. We need to get to the place where we attain our victories in the realm of the spirit and crush fear and crush the lies of the devil. He is a father of lies. And every time 
He is lying. He is lying to you that the Lord does not mean what he says. He comes to you and tries to say to you that the Lord God will never answer you, that you need to give up. But can you imagine if Daniel gave up? Hallelujah. If Daniel gave up, when he started fasting, the very first day the word of God tells us that the Lord revealed that the Lord released his answer the very first day that he started to pray. But we have talked about the second heaven and who are in the second heaven, the enemy and his co-hosts, co-hosts who are there and their work is to try to hinder anything that God would try to do for his children here on the earth. The Lord had released, was being, was being hindered, was being hindered by the, by the prince of Persia. But God, God was able to send angel Michael to reinforce the battle for Daniel. Because as Daniel continued on with effectual fervent praying, he was able to get his breakthrough. Hallelujah. He was able to get his breakthrough because he continued on with effectual fervent prayers. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. So, are you giving up quickly? in your circumstances are you being unable to apprehend what god has for you hallelujah are you making the mistake of being too shallow and being unable to wage a spiritual battle that god has ordained for you to wage as a soldier of the cross hallelujah god wants you to go back to your closet, go back to your prayer closet and begin to seek his face and allow the baptism of the Holy Spirit to come upon you so that he can empower you and give you the authority to be able to wage war in the heavenlies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So your problem or my problem as well our problem has been that we have tried to deal with our situations while we have been simply half baked hallelujah we have not been well done god wants us well done and spiritually robust people he wants us to be filled with power filled with might filled with everything that he can grant unto us so that we can quit being an embarrassment to our own royalty an embarrassment to our own dignity in the kingdom of god hallelujah hallelujah if you are a friend of God, God is going to reveal his workings and the things that he wants and desires to do and the realities about the unfoldings in our natural circumstances. When we look at the story of Job, the story of Job reveals a set of people who were a total embarrassment in the way that they interpreted the situation that was going on with Job. Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar came to Job as his friends, as his friends in the name of comforting him. And when they came to him, Bildad opened his mouth, and this is what he said to Job. If you were pure and upright, Surely now God would rise up for you and make whole the abode of your righteousness. In other words, 
what they were what Bill Dad himself was trying to say is that Job was going through all the torment he was going through because he was unrighteous. Eliphaz came and he started to reinforce what Bildad was saying. We see Eliphaz and Bildad showing up here and making a total embarrassment of the real situation that was unfolding. Job knew what was going on because he walked with God. And even though it was thousands of years before the New Testament was written, Job literally spoke the New Testament. How did he speak it? And he did not have any revelation truths, written revelations to be able to rely on. He knew this because his spirit man was alert and he, had, he stayed with God and he spent a lot of time with him. And God revealed these truths unto him. Hallelujah. So, when the devil later on showed up in the life of Job, the devil showed up in the midst of his trial inside his wife. Because his wife came and started to tell Job, Why don't you curse God and die? Now you can imagine, if Job never relied on the counsel of the Holy Spirit, who literally revealed to him, or the, you know, the counsel of God, who literally revealed to him that the reason as to why he was going through the torments he was going through is because he was going through a fiery trial. Job knew that. He knew he was going through a fiery trial. And that is why he said in the word of God that though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Hallelujah. He also said in Job chapter 19, for I know my redeemer is living and he shall rise on the last day. Even after they corrupt my skin, yet this in my flesh I shall see God. Hallelujah. In my flesh I shall see God. So these revelations are rising up in Job in the midst of his fiery trial. How is he able to speak these things and to have such deep spiritual insight? Because this really is supernatural eyesight in full action. And this is where God desires us to be. Hallelujah. God wants us to be deep people in the realm of the spirit. He wants us to live in an understanding of what is going on and not to be in the dark. Because that is the tactic of the enemy to keep you and I in the dark so that we do not know how to wage war against him. Hallelujah. So Psalm 42, 7 says, Deep calleth unto deep at the roars of the waterfalls of God. Hallelujah. Deep calleth unto deep at the roars of the waterfalls of God. This means that we must consult the counsel of the Holy Spirit. We must be led by the Holy Spirit so that we do not become oblivious of the obvious undertakings in the realms of the Spirit. We must know what is going on in the realm of the Spirit. We must live in the know. Hallelujah. So that we can humiliate, so that we can shame, so that we can expose, disgrace, crush, debase, and destroy all the works of the enemy. His intents and schemes will remain destroyed if we keep our eyes in the spirit and our ears in the spirit open. Hallelujah. So, 
as the Spirit of God fills us and as the Lord arises within us. Hallelujah. Anytime the enemy tries to come against you and I, he will always come too late as he did in the life of Job. He came too late because the jo because Job was already he was already full of the word of God. His spirit man was steady and unmovable. He literally said, "I will come forth like gold." Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will come forth as gold. Hallelujah. So, as the Lord arises within us, hallelujah, even as it says in Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ, yet not I who lives, but Christ liveth in me. Hallelujah. When the enemy comes against us, let him come and let him find the Lord to deal with. Hallelujah. The same God who kicked him out of heaven, the same God who rendered obsolete, totally crushed his head 2,000 years ago and sent him out. Hallelujah. This same devil, when he tries to encroach against you, he will come face to face with this arch enemy of his. He will come face to face with Jesus Christ. He will come face to face with the Lord. He will have to deal with the Lord in me. Hallelujah. Because it is no longer I who lives, but it is Christ who liveth in me. And that way, we are going to live in victory. And we are going to render unto the devil horrifyingly, embarrassing, awkward moments every single time when he tries to come against us in all situations, and in all circumstances. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.